Okay, welcome back to my guide for writing cadences. So in the last video, we wrote for very, very easy beginning drum line. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what I do when I want to write something that's a little bit more intermediate to advanced level. All right, so here is the cadence we wrote in the last video. All right, there it is in all its former glory. Uh, in this video, I'm just gonna add some stuff. Uh, we're gonna add some solos. We're gonna add uh, another eight measures of groove and uh, we're going to change a little bit of stuff about what this you know in, in the previously written music to make this a little bit more substantial okay so let's just get right into it all right um, in more beginning cadences you don't have a lot of really technically challenging rhythms uh, I think in this one there was only let's see one iteration of 16th notes mixed with eighth notes uh, and then very minimal use of like that kind of figure on an upbeat. Uh, but in more advanced cadences, you can start to play with this a little bit more heavily. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just look at what we have here and I'm gonna make some changes. And the first thing I'm gonna change is the first measure of the tenor uh, pattern. All right, so instead of three, four, and, I'm gonna change it to a dotted 16th note at eighth or dotted eighth sixteenth note with an eighth rest, and then an eighth note on the on the end of four, and I'm going to add some accents. Okay, and uh, we'll just have them. No need to revolutionize the sticking here. All right, so now we have that measure has been changed a little bit. Now I'm going to. make this measure a little bit more difficult all right and I think I'm also going to change the voicing of this the sticking too but probably just for this one uh, you know what just for goodness sake let's add another eighth note in there too so right here I'm gonna make this a paradiddle into a left hand uh, four and it's not going to change it too much, but uh, it's a little bit more substantial now. Uh, we're going to copy that first measure to the third measure. I'm going to play with my settings for some reason. All right, and there you go. Now let's see. For this, I don't want to change too much, but just to maybe give you a little more idea, let's do a paradiddle fill. Oops. There we go. Uh, for this last measure. Okay. Remember, we don't have to be so uh, so picky about where we put our more difficult music because this is for more advanced players. All right, so now let's change the sticking. Okay, no need to change this. All right, so for the, the beginner cadences, we kept everything strictly on two and four. Um, uh, for this one, let's do let's let's play around with that. Let's do something different. Okay, we're still going to keep it on stick clicks on the snare drum, but let's uh, let's put it on the upbeats. Uh, that's not too tricky of a rhythm to learn. Most of the time, you know, you can learn it by rote, but uh, I typically want to avoid it when I'm doing stuff for more easier pieces. But for here, let's let's just see what happens. All right, and then we'll have that. And yep, let's put an accent there just because the tenors have one. Um, and it'll probably be accented anyway. And you know what? Now since we've changed this, let's move the forte to the beginning of the measure as well. All right, so uh, we didn't have the bass drums do anything in this first one. Um, if, if you really wanted to, you could have them do the same thing as the snare drums, but um, I would just do it on the rim. And my version of Fan Alley doesn't have the rim uh, for the bass drum on it, so I'm not gonna bother with that. Uh, if you really wanted to do something, you could add maybe something on just one of the drums. Here, let's do that just for example's sake. Um, You could have the uh, the Africa rhythm on your bottom bass. And then 
let's have them join in on beat three and four with the unisons. Okay. Not until there though. Forte. And we'll keep this at piano since we don't necessarily want it to be heard very much. Uh, all right, cool. So let's, um, that looks pretty good to me now. Okay, so now the, now the next thing to do is make sure we get this copied over into everything. Let's see there. We got to add Forte good. And we'll come back to this in a minute, but just making sure that we got everything. Let's change that back to Forte. All right, cool. Okay, so uh, I, I don't, looking at it now, I don't think I wanna keep this for every single iteration. So let's change this up just a little bit work change the stickings perfect okay and while we're at it we're going to write a better fill measure in here and in here yeah okay so let's uh, let's figure out a quick little fill right now um, I'm going to listen to the first seven measures and then we'll uh, we'll talk about what I think I want to do. Okay. So first of all, let's add accents here. And uh, this is this is a little fill. I just like using um, in more intermediate intermediate stuff. Oops. Accent. Okay. After you start using Finale long enough, you start to kind of uh, figure out little tricks for yourself. Uh, maybe they work for you, maybe they don't, I don't know, but that's what I do. I just copy and paste a bunch of stuff to make different rhythms. All right, so that's that's a decently not easy fill. Oops. All right. So we're gonna change the dynamic to Forte and we're gonna keep it on every staff and begin. All right, now let's just have the tenors do mostly the same thing. And I, I when I'm when I'm using the same rhythm for or like across instruments, I generally try to keep the same sticking uh, on both instruments. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Normally, like I have this sticking right here in the snare drums. But when I write this rhythm on tenors, uh, my first instinct would be to do this. Yeah, um, but that wouldn't work on drum drum three on the left hand. So for now, we'll just make do with that. Let me make sure I got everything right there. Okay, good. All right, and then let's add beat four. Good. And accents. Because accents are fun. All right. And let's have just a little bit more fun with the bass drums. Don't want to go too different from what's being played rhythmically. And we'll have accents on that and replace the forte. Anyway, all right. Uh, so now let's do something a little bit different in the symbols. Not too different though. And sure, that'll work. 
apparently my virtual drumline likes to refer to these as China symbols. Don't know why, but there you go. Okay, uh, so now we've got that fill written down. And let's put the technique text back to the center of the snare drum. Okay, good. All right, so now since we're talking about the snare drum, let's look at this little accent pattern we've got going on here. So this is very, very vanilla. Okay, um, and now now we're going to make it a little bit more interesting. We're going to add maybe, you know, some uh, accents that aren't all on the right hand. So let's just get rid of all of these, even this one too. All right, so let's do, let's just do a tried and true method. Um, and maybe something a little different in the second. Okay, accents on the upbeats now, and then copy first to third, except we'll do four, there we go. And I'll get rid of those. Okay, so now that should sound a little bit more interesting. Um, so let's let's look at this bass part a little bit. Uh, we've already added that, so we'll add sticking there. Oh, no, don't do that, stop. I hate finale when it does that. Okay, all right, so now let's look at this. Uh, just looking on the top of my head, I don't really want to change too much about this. Let's do this. Uh, but one thing we can do is make this split more for everyone. Um, so let's just do a two note per drum, 16th note split. Um, I'm writing for four bass drums just because generally uh, four, four bass drum lines are a lot more common where I am right now in marching bands than five bass drum lines, but you know, they're, it's very easy to adapt four drums to five drums, no big deal. Okay, so that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, okay, cool. So there's the first eight measures done. Let's work on this one. Um, so let's let's keep the same snare drum rhythm, but let's add some more flavor with accents. Um, there, and then copy the third me first measure to third measure. No big deal. Okay, and then uh, we're not going to keep that tenor same tenor drum sticking or center pattern. So let's just change it to what we did earlier. Okay, perfect. All right, so now let's do um, a fill, okay, or another fill. And we're not going to do the, the thing we did in the last one where we kept the same fill for, for both times. Um, Let's add accents here to lead into it. Okay, uh, so I think for this one, since we're doing a more advanced intermediate type thing, I think I want to do a solo fill for right here, and maybe we'll maybe we'll just do it in the snare drum. Um, now I'm going to do something really dangerous here, and I'm going to write that rhythm: sixteenth note, eight sixteenth note. Um, I generally don't write it. Uh, unless I know I have someone that can handle it, but um, you know, if you know you have someone that can handle it, go ahead. All right. Um, but for me, I'm just writing for this video, so that's the first thing that came to my head. So I'm going to write it, uh, and I'm also going to write the first rolls of the video. All right. So welcome rolls, and I'm also going to write a six tuplet because it's a solo, and we're trying to be. A little bit more showy and we're gonna add a rim shot there we go okay now one advantage of having solo fills like this is that you know you just have one section playing it's not so super loud all the time okay um, so let's actually let's do this let's change this dynamic level to mezzo forte Everybody gets mezzo forte. Okay, and then let's just add. Oh, come on. There we go. 
Use your brain, Robbie. Okay. So, and then we'll add a choke crash here. Which I don't think that was in the original one, right? No, it was not. Not, a, not up to here, at least. So let's go ahead and mark that. No, I do not even have a thing for it. Okay. Perfect. All right. And then we'll just add a forte to everybody. And that's done. We'll add stickings for the snare drum. And you know what? Let's make this a paradiddle diddle. Right? Why not? Uh, and then two rights on that four. Okay. Both hands, right hand. We're only writing for one symbol player. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, so now we'll go to the second measure or the second four measures of groove, and uh, let's play a little bit. Oh, actually, no, not yet. Let's copy this into the snare drum. Change the dynamic marking back to forte. I wish I knew how to do that without changing the dynamic marking. I don't know if it's possible, but if it is and somebody knows, I'd love to also know. Um, anyway, so now let's make this a little bit more challenging uh, just to make it not so monotonous. Um, let's add some rolls in the snare drum. Yeah, why not? Again, you can do this as much or as little as you want if you're writing for more, you know, advanced groups, whatever. Um, this is just something I'm doing, so, you know, whatever. Um, and we, I don't think I want to do rolls here just yet, just because even if your students are more advanced, uh, you know, crescendoing rolls tend to be not, not great. Uh, but anyway, so there's the... Uh, there, there's the the original revamped, so to speak. All right, so let's uh, let's listen to that real quick. All right, so there's a couple of things I want to change about that right off the bat. First of all, we're going to put a piano in the crash. Let me fix this crescendo marking real quick. Okay, I actually don't like that. So let's take that out. Um, and I don't like the crash symbols here. So let's just clear that. And you know what? Let's just replace them with this, just for you know, easiness' sake. If you want to write an, a completely new symbol part for there, go for it. Um, but I, I'm not going to, uh, just because I don't have to, and I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not going to. Okay. Uh, so let's do let's do a rim shot right here to kind of show that the phrase is over. So and then this this forte marking is a little redundant. And you know what? Actually, let's try this um, instead of all four crashes being right there. Let's just do two and four here. That way we can save the full, you know, whole measure crash for the last part of the cadence. Um, you, know, you don't want to give away your hand too early, so to speak. Uh, okay, so that's cool. All right, we've got that. Uh, that's pretty much to my liking. Um, so now let's talk about adding stuff into this formula that I mentioned in the last video. All right. So the next part of this cadence, I would do three two-measure solos, and then a two-measure build, and then another eight measures of groove. It doesn't have to be a new groove. It can be the same groove. For this one, just so that this video isn't 55 minutes long, uh, I'm just going to copy it and paste it. But uh, you know, you're more than welcome to write a new groove if you want. Uh, it doesn't matter. You know. I'm not going to though because this is a video and you don't want to watch 55 minutes of me writing something completely new. Okay, uh, so uh, it doesn't really matter which order the solos are going in, although I typically don't ever write a cymbal solo just because even in more advanced lines you're still going to have typically some players who aren't um, very good, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, and they usually end up going on the cymbal line. Uh, so even when I'm writing more advanced stuff, if I'm writing for someone, 
you know, I'll still keep those kind of rules in mind. Uh, since we had a tenor solo start it, essentially, and then we had a kind of a one measure snare solo right here, let's start out with a bass drum solo. Let's be daring for, <laughs> for two measures. Uh, all right, so let's again, immediately let's change the dynamic um, right after the first attack. Um, so let's just start on back on forte, add an accent here. Okay, and it, it can be, you know, the, the solos can be you know, whatever you want. Um, for bass drums, maybe we'll go a little easier just because again, even in more advanced sections, you'll still have your weaker players and you know, kind of the, the best of the worst, so to speak, will usually end up on bass drums. Uh, so let's just show off a little bit of the bass drum split abilities. Um, so we'll have digga 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 digga. Oops. And then a unison rhythm to finish it off. Uh, and then let's maybe, let's be really daring. And let's have a sextuplet in between the bass drums. Accents to the unisons because it's a bass solo. Okay, so there, there's a bass solo. You know, why not? Um, not too hard, not too easy. It's got splits, it's got unisons, it's got everything you could ever hope for. Okay, so there's the two measure solo down for that. Um, we're going to add some filler on the snare drum. Uh, you know what? Let's do some different stick cloak rhythms. Let's do a clave rhythm like that. Oh, Lord. There we go. Uh, and this could sound like absolute garbage. It might. Uh, I don't know. I'm doing this completely, you know, completely blind. Uh, so let's let's see how that sounds. Let's <laughs> let's see if I'm crazy. Eh, it's not too bad. Um, you don't want to have it at double for uh, fortissimo or double forte, as I used to call it. Um, Cool. Uh, so let's see which drums are the tenors on. Oops. All right. So my my kind of go-to filler thing for tenors is to have them play one e and two e and three e and four e and at uh, you know repeat until done. Um, so let's just do that, and we'll put it at a uh, at a piano dynamic level because. Um, come on now. I don't want to have two melodic instruments at the same volume at the same time. Um, actually, let's have one more. Okay, and then we'll lead this into let's do a, let's just do a, a, a tenor solo next. Actually, no, let's do a snare solo next. Yeah, tenors have already had enough of this. Okay, uh, so now snare solo uh, let's just there we go I'm just gonna write something relatively simple right really quick I'll probably speed this part up if I think to remember to And oh, so let's uh, let's take this same rhythm at the you know at the end of the bass drum solo and use it as the end of the snare drum solo. I think they call that call and response. Why not? Um, and you know what? Let's even have another paradiddle diddle 
and I'm not even going to take the time to write it out. I'm just going to copy and paste it and have a good old time with that. Okay, uh, so now let's add stickings. That's how I write stickings. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that on my keyboard, but it sounds really funny sometimes. Okay, uh, so right hand, right hand. And I tend to write stickings for every note in the snare drums and tenors, uh, and then just the unisons on uh, bass drums. Just so the, I used to do it for every single note on bass drums, but the music started to look a little cluttered. And so that was kind of the, the sacrifice I made. Uh, but if you want to write every every sticking in, you know, perfect, go ahead. Uh, especially if you have a younger drum line, uh, I would actually kind of encourage it. But for me, you know, where I am in my life right now, I just do the unisons. Um, and let's kind of keep this uh, rhythm going right here um, in bass drums. And again, this could sound absolutely terrible, uh, but we'll find out together or I'll find out before you do, and then if it sounds bad, um, you won't hear it. <laughs> I'll just take it out and write a cute little comment, and you know, it'll be fine. Because that's the magic of video editing. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, cool, that's not bad. Um, so now let's do a kind of lead in to tenors. Wow, that looks bad. That looks really bad. Um, here, let's do this. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Uh, put a crescendo there. Stickings. Okay, great. Um, oh, wait a minute. No, I don't want that to be a forte. And that's a forte this can be a forte okay so now we've got four measures of solo which we just heard and now uh, we'll do a two measure tenor solo um, but first let's go ahead and copy this Copy this too. I'm not going to write a symbol part for this. It's lovely. Okay, so let's let's write a little symbol part. Okay, we start with a choked crash, and you know what? I'm just going to do two and four. I am not the greatest symbol writer ever. Um, that's one of my kind of downfalls, but um, I get by. So <laughs> no one's going to come here to learn how to write for symbols, I hope. Um, so let's put this at mezzo piano. And we'll do an accent on this sizzle just for fun. Uh, let's listen to that real quick. All right, cool. And then maybe we'll get a little bit more intricate in the tenor solo and have offbeats on the hi-hat. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay, so now let's write a tenor solo. Um, and let's uh, let's use the same rhythm that we have in the other solos. Now, uh, I think I'm going to use this as an opportunity to kind of show you or to, to kind of put some rolls into the tenor part. Um, you don't want to show the snare drums rolls and not have them in the tenors because they'll get offended. It's not politically correct. I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying that, but I don't care. Okay, uh, so now they've got the rolls, and 
let's have a rim shot fest because those sound really cool on tenors. Half the reason I think tenors were invented were for rim shots. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Yeah, half the reason that they were invented. Uh, and then, yeah, let's have a six tuplet in here just because we can. Um, oops. So now we're getting into the build. And I think I will have a roll down for this one uh, just because uh, we can. Uh, and eventually your drum line is going to need to learn how to play it. You know, So we might as well start with a cadence. Um, and let's just give them four 16th notes. Change everybody's dynamic level to fortissimo, or double forte, or really loud, whatever you want to call it. Um, let's change this. Let's have a rest on beat three, and then four. If we had multiple symbols, I'd put four and, but this is generally easier for one symbol, in my opinion. Okay, so let's check that and add stickings. Let's see. Okay, let's add stickings to this. Cool. All right, so now let's listen to this just for, just to make sure we don't sound really bad. That sounds really cool. I really like that. All right, so now roll down. Um, Let's just set this up real quick. Whole bunch of 16th notes. Diddle. Accent. And I used to use Forte pianos in Finale, but I, I found that they sound just absolutely terrible. So we're already, you know, in theory, we're already at Fortissimo for this note. So I'll just add a piano to this note, and it sounds so much better. We'll add a crescendo, maybe on beats three and four. And then I'll immediately put edge, or edge of the head for the snare drums uh, to center. And then uh, just to be cheeky and to save a little bit of time, let's use the same fill from earlier for the fill here. Uh, just so that you're not watching, you know, 40 minutes of me creating wonderful drum music. Okay, uh, so the snare drums, I uh, can start right off on a roll. Typically, I don't make the tenors do it, just because uh, if you see right here, they're on drum four, um, and I, I like to give them a chance to move their arms back up to drum one. Oops. Okay, uh, and then let's just do... Oh, come on now. Okay, and yeah, now let's just go down. Uh, and let's just go down again. No big deal. Not revolutionary writing for the tenors, but it works, and it's idiomatic, so it's good. Okay, uh, so again, we're already at Fortissimo here, so we'll just put the piano here, and then a crescendo. And then I'll, maybe I'll just have no diddles right here. Um, all right, so now the bass drums. Typically, in my experience, it is usually easier if you if you can't play thirty second notes singles, don't even try to play diddles. Uh, for right now, I'm gonna assume that we can play thirty second notes on our bass drums. And I'm not going to make them do it the whole time. Um, matter of fact, I'm just going to make them do it there. So crescendo here, piano here, and there we go. All right, so in the cymbals, let's just do a whole note. 
Crash or China Symbol, one of the two. All right, uh, and let's just see what this sounds like. All right, perfect. Okay, uh, and you know what? Just because I'm me and I think I'm gonna really like that, let's just have this be the last fill at the end too. Um, but we're gonna change it. Yeah, we're gonna change that to a triplet to make it sound really cool. Because triplets are very, very cool. All right, and then let's just have a choked crash right there. Boom. All right. So now, um, if again, like I said earlier, if you want to write a new uh, eight measure groove, you go ahead. But uh, generally, I don't just to, you know, even though this is a more advanced cadence, you know, your, your kids are gonna look at it and go, oh my God, 33 measures. And, you know, 33 is starting to get a little long for cadence's sake, so, um, or at least in my opinion. So I'm just gonna write the same groove here. Um, let's see, seven measures. And the I think the there only the only thing I'm going to change about it is uh, the I'm going to make this fortissimo again. Okay, this is going to be forte for everybody. Um, wait, what did I do there? What did oh, okay. All right, uh, and then I'm just, I'm going to, I'm gonna change this to two and four. All right, and then for this last couple measures, uh, let's get rid of that and that. I'll do all four. All right, and then do we need any stickings? No, we don't. We just need one here. All right, so now let's um, let's put five measures in this last system, and hopefully that doesn't look too too terribly bad. No, that looks okay to me. Okay, uh, so. Let's take one look uh, for at everything for stickings. I mean, my computer usually gets really slow at this point because there's a lot going on here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it hasn't uh, hasn't died on me yet, so that's that's something to be proud of, I guess. Okay, no stickings missing there. And we already checked this. Okay, so now let's check for dynamics. Uh, all at Forte, good. And I think we'll we'll just change this last measure to Fortissimo, just because it's the end and we want to be loud. All right, so that's that's it. Um, and you know we'll we'll uh, we'll listen to it again. And uh, I might change it, but uh, this this is what I do. Um, even for writing advanced cadences, if you can plug it into this formula, you know it, it's not so hard to do, all right? And um, you know sometimes it'll sound great on the first try, and sometimes it won't, and you'll be stuck banging your head against the wall. Uh, but one thing that I've always found, and this this goes for any any composing that I do. The moment that it seems you're stuck, okay, you're only, you know, one idea away from, you know, finishing the whole piece or having something really, really special. All right, so don't don't be so quick to throw something in the trash just because you get stuck on it for a few days or even a few weeks. Okay, uh, some of the best pieces that I've ever written, in my opinion, uh, have come from being stuck and wanting to give up. But just you know, keep at it. Don't. Don't stop because you think you're stuck. You're you're only one idea away from 
you know, something really good. Anyway, uh, this video has gone on for way too long, so uh, I'm going to record this real quick, and uh, we'll have the finalized audio and everything at the end. So, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. And any questions you have, you know, comment down below, and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. But uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.